Today I'm going to show you how to make some fabulous potpourri, some Mrs. Meyers fall cleaner on the cheap, and find out if I ate all that food I made last week. So last weekend, if you've been following my channel, you know that I did a huge healthy meal prep, the biggest one I've ever done since I've been an empty nester. Well, maybe ever. I thought anyway. I'd give you a recap. These are the leftovers. Today is day seven. And I have just enough of this. And this is kale, red pepper, red onion, and a cilantro lime dressing. And then this is the copycat green goddess salad. And then these are curried carrots with pistachios and some grilled chicken I did in a balsamic marinade. And what I'm gonna do is a whipped tahini. I put in the bottom of the bowl as a base, but I'm gonna do my roasted carrots on top of that tahini whip. And then these other dishes on the side. I am going to go ahead and freeze probably all or most of this leftover green goddess salad. I was inspired by a frozen bird's eye box of that so I know you can freeze it right. So let's get with it on a little tahini whip. I'm going to throw some plain protein in the bowl and this is high protein yogurt so I'm loving that and then almost to the bottom of that and I'm going to make some protein bread this week. A big spoonful of the tahini. So for seasonings we're going with about a half a teaspoon of cumin and then some salt and pepper. Now I'm going to give this a whip Gonna whip it good. And I add about half a tablespoon of water to this because I want this whip to be thick for my carrots, but not so thick down the road when I use it more like a dressing. Okay, now you see why we call that whipped? Because it looks like whipped cream, doesn't it? So I'm gonna put this in. Not too much. That's probably about a fourth of a cup there. Okay guys, we're gonna put this beauty together. Green goddess in a bag for the freezer, otherwise I got every bite eaten after tonight. And this is my tahini and yogurt whip. I'm putting carrots, now I'm gonna to top chicken. Top my chicken and carrots with a little more of this tahini whip that I thinned out a little bit. And a sprinkle of cilantro, because why not? Pasta and butternut squash here. A little tiny bit of the green goddess. A last little bit of this kale and quinoa. And now I'm going to sit down and enjoy this delicious bowl it's Sunday and I'm back on the meal prepping, but first I'm gonna start with a little round of every bit counts of storing things so they don't go bad so that I can make the most of every little bit. I'm gonna start with these oranges. I use them in my iced tea and these aren't bad per se, but they've gotten a little, you know, shriveled so what I'm going to do is slice these up and dehydrate them. I've been following a channel, Dono's Homestead. I just love him. He's inspired me to slice up all these oranges and dehydrate them, which is something I've never done before. According to Dono, I can dehydrate these in my oven. I've got this great big oversized sheet pan that I've laid these little cooling racks on and bake them for three hours at 175 Fahrenheit, flipping the oranges every 30 minutes. So I am planning on putting some of those in a fall potpourri. And then I've got another bag of oranges that I just got at Aldi a few days ago. These were $2.99, which is a pretty good deal. And I'm gonna slice those up and put them in a Ziploc baggie in the freezer for my iced tea. Well, you might have seen a couple of weeks ago, I did a little Nelson's run and I found actually two bags on clearance. I got like five pairs in each bag for a buck. 
and these have been in my fridge. I've used up all of the others. And even though these look a little funky, they're still pretty firm. So I'm gonna peel those and chop them up and put them in two containers for salads this week. And then last week's Nelson's run, I got a couple bags of fresh herbs. This is sage. I haven't used any. There's just a couple of dark leaves happening, which I think they're still okay. But I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this in the freezer. I got this ginormous bag of three peaches. Look how big those things are. And it's just a buck. They're just now feeling slightly tender. So I, I think they're, you know, maybe perfectly ripe. And I'm gonna chop these up and make a keto-friendly peach and bourbon crumble. And I'll stand as an Aldi this week. And I've only got five or six chocolate covered bananas in the freezer still. So I'm gonna do another round of those because they're so wonderful. When you get that urge for a little sweet ice cream type thing, you know, eat a couple of little chocolate covered frozen bananas. You haven't had very many calories because I use sugar free chocolate chips. And so it's a pretty sin free way to get that urge satisfied without going off my food plan. I'm going to get to it and then I'm going to get started on the meal preps. My frozen bananas and sliced oranges. And guys, these oranges smell so crazy good and they're sparkly. One for the office, one for my side by side. And I'll put chocolate on those bananas this weekend when I have more time. So here are my orange slices. This was six oranges. I tried to slice them as thinly as possible and used a serrated knife to get that done. Now they're gonna go in the oven at 175 for three hours. Here are the dehydrated oranges. They were simple enough to do, you know, just slice them up, throw them in there. The only Super intensive part is every half hour, 45 minutes, pulling them out and flipping them over. And I had to do that six, seven times over the course of four hours. And they still seem maybe just barely a little on the not dehydrated side. But they've been rolling in that oven for four hours and the direction said three to four. And I am wanting to wind down for the night. It's now 8.30, so that's as dehydrated as they're gonna get in the oven. I'm gonna leave these out here to air dry for the rest of the night. And hopefully by morning, they'll feel very dry. And then I'll put some in some potpourri I'll be whipping up. So I finished dehydrating my oranges. It's the next morning and I let them air dry overnight. And although they feel a little soft still in the meaty part, I'm gonna call these sufficiently dehydrated enough to make my little jar of pumpkin potpourri. These I'm gonna leave out during the day still while I'm at work. And then when I get home, I'm gonna put them in this jar. I didn't think I had enough oranges to fill this jar, but I sure did. Now for the fun part. <laughs> I got this little pumpkin, which is about uh, four or five inches across at Hobby Lobby this year. I got it 40% off and I think I paid maybe seven bucks after the sale discount. And I got these little woven pumpkins at Dollar Tree this weekend. How cute are those? They've got such a great selection of items this year. I'm gonna start with a couple of slices on the bottom there. Try to lean them up against the side so they show nicely. And I'm gonna put a couple of these pumpkins in there just for a little extra filler and fun. It's Monday morning. I've got to go to work. I've got about an hour and 15 minutes before I have to start getting ready, so I need to get with it here. I've got this jar of cinnamon sticks that I rarely use. During the fall, occasionally I like to put a stick of this cinnamon in a cup of tea, and then I just keep reusing the stick over and over, so I'm gonna save a couple of back. 
And although they smell cinnamony, they don't smell significantly cinnamony. So I'm gonna cheat and add a little cinnamon oil to these. I've got this little box of various fall essential oils at um, Amazon last year. I think I paid eight bucks for this. And look at all these great scents. This is wonderful. And the reason why I bought it was to inexpensively refill my Mrs. Meyers fall multi-purpose spray bottle. This is orange clove, which I love. And I just put a tablespoon of white vinegar in here and then 10 drops of whichever oil I want. And orange oil, it's food grade safe. So I add 10 drops of that. The rest of the way with purified water, give it a shake and spray my counters. You know, this stuff's like $10 a bottle. I'm on year two of refilling this thing and I use it all the time, all year long because pumpkin spice slash fall scents are my favorite. And I'm gonna put cinnamon oil on my cinnamon sticks. And I also have here, I've got some nutmeg pods, some cloves, and some star anise that I'm gonna put in here. Couple cinnamon sticks. And I'm just gonna keep layering this. Mmm, it smells so good. I'm not a fan of black licorice, so I bought this purposely just for decor. Now a couple of cloves. Another orange slice. myself out of this pumpkin jar because I had a big one that's you know cookie jar size and I decided oh they're gonna be cute next to each other so when I make some cookies I'll put that jar out here on the counter next to this tray where I'm gonna put this little potpourri. I'm trying to get some of the neat anise on the edge so you can see that as well. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just stuffing things in there. But it sure smells amazing. My, my nose is very happy. One last stick on top, just because they're pretty. And maybe a star anise on top, because that'll show. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the rest of these cloves in there. All right, there's my little pumpkin jar. <laughs> How cute is that? That is adorable, you guys, if I do say so myself. I love it. That's giving me all kinds of joy. Oh, mm, I wish you could smell it. My little tray. And here's a look at all the little potpourri goodies in there. It was well worth burning my morning up getting this little pumpkin potpourri jar together. This is really giving me joy, guys. I hope it inspires some of you to try some dehydrating oranges and put a potpourri together. I hope you guys all have a great week. Thanks for watching.